So if you're trying to paint up your door casings and your miters are not looking 100%, not pointing any fingers on who did the work, point is you need to get them looking nice. I'm gonna show you how to get these horrible looking miters into beautiful works of art. And the cool thing here is these techniques are gonna work for any of the painted moldings in your home. And even if you're a seasoned pro, I'm gonna show you a couple things that you probably didn't know. So the first thing you wanna do here is scrape off any of the loose bits with a putty knife or your fingernail. Once you've got that all cleaned up, you wanna to get to the filling. The mistake that most people make here is they use the wrong material. A lot of people will use a lightweight spackle or even dap or caulking. These are not the right choices. Caulking has its purpose for along the edges to the wall and the frame of the door, but definitely not for the face of a miter. And the lightweight spackling, the thing that is not good about this is it's just way too soft. If you compare it to a wood filler, you can see, you can press your thumbnail into the dried X and the wood filler is quite a bit harder. I like to use the Elmer's white wood filler. You can buy this stuff at Home Depot or you can get it online. I will link it in the description. So get that wood filler. I just squeeze it out or dip my finger into the tub there and then press it as deep as you can into the crack. Sounds a little dirty, but that's what you wanna do. Work it in there. Cover the nail holes while you're at it and just press it into the cracks here. So you wanna put enough wood filler on and build it up enough that you're not gonna to have to do two coats, but you don't want to make a huge mess. Otherwise it's gonna be a lot more sanding. And then if there's any little uh, tricky profiles here, I have a 90 degree. I'll take the putty knife, I'll take the edge and I'll just clean out that filler a little bit before it dries. Otherwise, you're going to have a really difficult time sanding a perfect 90 degree in this corner. So now that that is all built up, I'm gonna let that dry. And once that's ready to sand, you wanna avoid using like a really soft sponge. I prefer to use 150 grit sheet sandpaper. On the left miter, all the faces of the moldings met up quite nicely. So the sheet sandpaper is all you're gonna need. And then use your finger to feel, make sure that everything is nice and flush and smooth. Then on the other side, the moldings did not meet up whatsoever. On this big flat section, it stuck out about a sixteenth of an inch. Here, if you have an orbital sander, that's going to be the way to go. So I just put some 150 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. And you want to run that over until you're just seeing the primer removed on both sides of the miter. That's going to let you know that it's going to be smooth run your finger over that, check it out. And then I just sanded the rest of it with the sheet sandpaper. And now that you've got that all sanded up, you want to just blow that off. If you have a power blower, that will work nice. If you just have your mouth, just get close to it, and blow off all the dust, grab some paper towel or a rag and just give it a wipe off. Now you want to prime this filler. A lot of people will just go straight to paint here, but priming is gonna make things look considerably better especially if you've got into any of the bare wood. With the primer, the mistake that a lot of people will make here is using a water-based primer. Anytime you have raw wood and water-based paints, it's not a good combination. What I like to use is an alcohol or an oil-based primer. Kills is a really good product. Uh, Bin Zinzer makes a good alcohol-based shellac primer. I will link those in the description as well. So just take the primer, make sure you shake the can up vigorously, and then you're gonna to wanna to just do some light to heavy coats over those filler areas. The nice thing here with primer two is it's going to fill in any of the really small imperfections and you're gonna get a much nicer job than if you skip this step. If you've got a seam here that didn't have any bare wood showing, you don't really need to use the primer. It's a bit of an extra step. So I would probably just head straight to paint in that case. But here we have a lot of bare wood showing and there was a lot of chipping and stuff. So the primer is gonna be a really nice touch. Once that primer is all dry, you wanna give it another quick little light sand. And here the soft sand sponge is actually the perfect tool for the job because you're going to be really light. You're not changing the profile of the wood whatsoever. Use your hand, feel if there's any rough spots, hit that with the sandpaper. Then you're gonna give that one more blow and a final wipe. All the prep work's done, you're ready for final paint. Use some kind of a dedicated water-based trim paint in a satin or a semi-gloss. That's gonna be nice and durable. And to see what this monstrosity looks like all finished up, 
Boom. This is a work of art. This is gonna be better than 99% of the miters you're gonna see from professionals out in the real world. So follow those steps, you'll get great results. And if you need some help doing the caulking around the outer edges, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video right over here. Is anyone gonna mention my fancy hair in the comments? I hope so. I know it's fancy. Try to make it so it's just like, not so stupid. <laughs> that would be great.